I came into her house and I just really had no idea how much you have. And I'm so excited for you to share with me and everyone else what you got. So what do you got, Mom? Well, I think if, if any of you have watched some of the other vlogs that Keely and I have done, I've mentioned more than once my grandmother who came from Denmark, talented woman who had learned all sorts of needlework. And she taught her daughters, and those daughters taught their daughters, and I've taught my daughter, and I've taught my, some of my granddaughters. Yeah, so, you kind of skipped me. No, I have a, one piece of yours. <laughs> okay, <laughs> then I did one thing. <laughs> anyway, and I'm delighted to be able to share with you what my family, going back quite a few generations, mm -hmm. have accomplished the needle and the thread. Mm -hmm. How exciting. Yeah. All right, well, what are we gonna do first? Well, on the couch, because I have this everywhere. I'm gonna go behind the couch because I'd like to lift these things up for you to see better. Well, I don't have that many pieces of my grandmother's work, but this is a monumental one. Look at that. She crocheted with a tiny, thin thread, um, opposed to knitting with thick material. And look at that. It's a bedspread. She one, made one for each one of her daughters. That was my grandmother, um, um, Carolyn Marie from Denmark, mm -hmm. um, mom's mom. I, I can't tell you, if anybody is crocheted, and I have done that also, I can't tell you how long this took. Yeah, that looks professional. Mm -hmm. It's crocheted? Mm -hmm. Because this is the same, and this is a smaller thread. Every, every stitch has got the right tension. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just beautifully made. She gave this to your mom. And one Martha, to Elma. One to Elma and one to Margaret. Margaret. Okay, so how does this in such good condition? Because, because, because this has been in a cedar chest. Ah, yeah. And a lot of this stuff smells a little cedar chesty mm -hmm. <laughs> still. I have taken it, because my mom and my Elma both had cedar chests. When we sold the cabin, it all came here. I took it all out of the cedar chest. I washed them all very carefully and I ironed everything. And again, last night I ironed again. Wow. But there's still a little bit of smell to it. But this sat in that Caesar chest probably for the last 60, 70 years. Now this is my mother's work and there is much more of it. I couldn't believe how much I had, but it all came down to me, only daughter. Um, and this is an embroidered quilt. And mother did a lot of these embroidered quilts. In fact, I, I found a package that had the squares because you did them squares individually and then you put it all together as a quilt. Um, some of them were done, and I'm just wondering if one of my granddaughters would like to finish that. But anyway, this is this is one of the quilts. This would be another one. She had some extra uh, embroidered butterflies. Mm -hmm. She made quilts out of that. She made I remember quilt. that. Yeah, she made a quilt. Out. Aren't they pretty though? Mm -hmm. I don't know how many embroidered. I remember at least probably three or four um, embroidered quilts. Wow. But this was Mom's forte, and we're gonna we're gonna talk about just quilts for a second here. This is called a uh, fan, and she had such a color sense. I think it's a, a masterpiece, but she did one for each one of the weddings. You must have gotten one. Mm -hmm. Do tell, what do we got? This is made by another aunt, Wanda. Mm -hmm. I don't have a whole lot of her stuff. It's a dish towel, but that was small potatoes and what she did. Well, let's talk about dish towels because uh, that used to be a big tradition. That was yeah. part of probably a wedding gift or, or a shower gift. Is a flower sack dish Flower so sack. Yeah, so Could you, have been, yeah, but so this you, wasn't. Why? This? Because this is newer. No, no, like if you go to Target or something, you can get this. But they're not flower sack. They're just cotton. Oh, that's what they're called. Mm -mm. Where did you see flower sack? A Target. <laughs> You did? Yes, Big liar. I did. Well, then it is. I don't yeah, know. So if you go to a store and you go try to get a dish towel, it's either all that fancy stuff or they have one section where that you can buy like six to 10 of these all in one shot. And I think they're called flower sack. Well, it could be, it could be. Mm -hmm. And that's probably what the women years ago used. Yeah. Was, was a flower sack material. One year um, for Christmas, all my cousins and my aunts and my mom and everybody, we did a, a small sewing project to give to each other. Mm -hmm. So we all did about seven or eight of something. And this was part of Wanda's mm -hmm. gift to everybody. Mm -hmm. Both Elma and Wanda went to the county fairs with mm -hmm. their work. Mm -hmm. and so they got the, uh, ribbons. And, and the, the best was if the back, look, it all goes one way. Oh, talk about that. If, if it's really nice in the back, that means what? The judges gave you more points if mm -hmm. the back looked like this. There you go. And everything is going one way. And that is not, e that's not easy. I've never been able to do that. A little tiny tablecloth, usually for card tables. Oh. I got some over there too, Elma made. 
But um, this would be, the, I found the napkin that matched, and this would be the embroidery that was on that piece, mm, too. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well done, Wanda. Yes. Next, I'm going to show you my Aunt Elma's work. She was much more prolific than the rest. Mm -hmm. um, she never married. She lived with, she took care of Mickey and I for until seventh grade, lived with us while mom worked, dad worked. Um, she was like a second mom in many, many, many ways. And she never married and had children, so when she passed away, I got all of her stuff too. And I've tried to take very good care of it. Elma's stitches were magnificently fine. My mm -hmm. word, her stitchery. And another thing is, she never used a hoop. Mm -hmm. I don't think I could embroider without a hoop. It keeps it there, keeps it taut. Mm -hmm. But she had it and held it in her hand, and that's how she did it. Amazed me. Mm -hmm. By the end of her showing, I'll show you why it amazed me. But she'd love to do pictures, and she did a lot of them. Oh, so pretty. Yeah. Pledge of Allegiance. Oh, wow. Wow, very patriotic. And oh, look at the backs of that, too. Yeah. That's, that El that's Elma's work. Talent. Yeah. Right there. Mine are a little more sloppy, to say mm -hmm. the least. This was done for a new baby on a wall. Okay. In the baby's room. Oh, cool. Isn't hmm. that beautiful? Mm hmm. That's nice. Very beautiful. One of the Psalms, I believe. Oh, wow. Just so impressive. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Writing that's hard to do. Hmm. And this is a, a children's prayer. Now I lay me down to sleep. Mm -hmm. Which is what I used Lord. to say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I should die before I wake, I pray thee, Lord, my soul to take. If I should live for, for Other another days. days, I pray thee, Lord, to guide my ways. Amen. That gorgeous. Nice. That's beautiful. I have one frame downstairs that's really yep, big. Yeah, that looks familiar. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It is, it's much more intricate than this one. And this is my Aunt Elma's writing. Oh, wow. It's the Lord's Prayer. Look at that old cursive. It's so neat. Mm -hmm. The Lord is my shepherd. Mm-hmm. 23rd Psalm. Psalm. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Beautiful. Yeah. That should be framed in home, yeah. too. Well, they all should. Really, it's a beautiful thing. Hmm. It was a woman's work. Nice. <laughs> Especially at that time. Yeah. That's what you did. Right you, on. You made meals for your family. Yeah, that was the job. And here's another um, baby's prayer. Now I may be down to sleep, but a bigger version. Mm-hmm. A little cherub baby. This is a patriotic one, and she must have gotten a kit because it looks like it's linen. Well, well, Jesus fun. probably didn't have blue eyes, but Scandinavian. <laughs> <laughs> but she loved her Jesus. Yep, absolutely. I need to redecorate some of my kitchen, and mm -hmm. there's some stuff I want to get rid of, and I've not known what to do, so now I think I might take a couple of those and mm -hmm. frame them. Mm -hmm. I think so I idea. am inspired and excited. My Aunt Elma um, embroidered on countless pillowcase sets. She completed a series years ago. They were called the Southern Bell series, and you got the pillowcases with with this embroidery on it but then there was these areas where you put lace isn't that gorgeous gorgeous but i remember sleeping on these kind of pillowcases at grandma and grandpa's house i think mom. mom used them i i've not used them oh so pretty isn't that though yeah have you ever seen anything like that before yeah when i slept on it when i was a kid <laughs> Because there was so many. Yeah. They embroidered so many that yes, they we just did. used them. They did. I remember always loving the purple ones. Oh, that's so pretty. Isn't that gorgeous Purple's stuff? my favorite color. Yes. But this is called cut work. Where you embroider, you embroider the whole thing. But look at these little tiny stitches that go around. And then you have areas where you don't embroider. And with a fine, fine scissor, you cut it out. Oh, wow. That's yeah. how they do it. Yeah, look at that. Because that looks like machine made. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow is right. And um, there's, there's quite a few of these. There's, this has a bit of cut out in it, too. Weren't these shower gifts? Yeah, people. Oh yeah, oh years yeah. And years and years ago, and really up to my generation, because I don't know if you got a set, but I and 
I embroidered the whole top of a queen size sheet and pillowcases to match. Mm -hmm. I don't remember who I gave those to, but I did a couple of them. But years and years ago, um, either the girls were taught and they embroidered pieces and put in their hope chest. I had a hope chest. You embroidered a lot of your own stuff. You put it in there, you waited for your marriage. And um, at the same time, your mothers and your grandmothers and your aunts were, were sewing all sorts of stuff together, collecting stuff for your first home. And they would be presenting these type of things to you for your shower gifts or even wedding gifts because um, years ago, there wasn't much money and you didn't get a whole lot for things. But this would be the type of things that you would get for like a house shower. Alrighty. Or, well, I'm gonna show you some dresser scarves they were called years uh -huh. ago. Or runners, we call them now, if you want to put it down the middle of a, a dining room table. But you don't see these anymore, mm -mm. ever, mm -mm. ever. But every woman had them. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because at that time, they didn't have a zillion pretty things, especially in my family. There wasn't a whole lot of money for all mm -hmm. those really pretty things. And these things added color mm -hmm. and some beauty to your home. And so the farmhouses were spruced up with things like this. Mm -hmm. Because weren't a lot of farmhouses pretty bare minimum? Mm -hmm. my, my grandmother, well, they lived with their two sons at different times. Mm -hmm. And of course, they were boys. And, and, and again, there wasn't a ton of money. Mm -hmm. So they were pretty bare and minimum. Mm -hmm. So if you could have this in your bedroom, on your dresser, mm -hmm. I mean, that, that gave some color in your life. Yeah, definitely. And it also gave you joy to do it, mm -hmm. to sit down after a day's work and, and relax, but still be productive. And I have that gene. If I'm doing something, I feel I'm productive. Mm -hmm. And I like that feeling. Yep. So, um, so these are dresser scars. They're usually about this long, a little mm -hmm. bit longer. The ends go over the mm -hmm. sides. Mm -hmm. So that's where you, where you usually have your color. So this is cross stitch. Mm -hmm. Now again, Elma did all these? Elma did all. Restaurant in Casson where I grew up, it was called Blaine's Restaurant Cafe, Blaine's Cafe maybe. But Granny Blaine, she crocheted beautifully. When mom and Elma would finish a product and they wanted some crochet on it, they would give it to her and she'd crochet these endings. Isn't that pretty? Yeah. Granny Blaine, and she was probably in her 80s when she was doing that. Mm, cool. Yeah. Granny Blaine. Elma like peacocks by Georgia. Mm. I do too. Whoops, let's see mm -hmm. how we can get that right. Mm -hmm. It's ecru. Ah, very nice. Went like a taupe? Went, went, yeah, went with everything. Just a dainty oh, little pink like one. Pink. Very pretty. Mm -hmm. Nice. Mm -hmm. Basket of mm -hmm. yellow flowers. Mm -hmm. Cut work. Mm -hmm. I think this is a beauty. Yeah, or another peacock. Another peacock. Very pretty. Yes. This is called a guest towel, a guest hand towel. And they're small little things usually of linen. Very delicate. It's not fragile because I think it's linen and linen is pretty durable. Very nice. Now this is a runner and this is called applique. There's embroidery on here. This, this is a lazy daisy stitch right there, a lazy daisy stitch. Mm -hmm. you, you can look it up and see how it works, but you pull it up and you pull it around and pull it down again, and there you got this petal. This is appliqued, and it's when you take a material, a separate material, you cut it out to shape, and you put it on there, you fold all the edges, fold all the edges under, and then you stitch those. And she um, uh, French knotted the little bunch mm -hmm. to be look like seeds or whatever. Yeah. That's a lot of work. Yeah, that's beautiful. Or when you get into applique work, oh my goodness. Do they still do that nowadays? Yes, they do. Oh, they do all boy. of this. There are wonderful needlework, guilds, um, museums, um, classes, people um, all over the world. It's it died back for a while, but I have an idea with the interest that I see on Facebook that is coming back again. Um, the fact that a woman can sit down and, and do something beautiful. And she doesn't... You don't have to have a ton of talent. You can start out with something small and, and you can start out simply and just learn the craft. Look at all that was done. Yep. Wow. This is my favorite. Ooh. This is my absolute favorite. Because okay. I've fallen in love with turquoise. Yeah, that's beautiful. Look oh, at that's that. a butterfly. You've cut out maybe like this much mm -hmm. and had it framed. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that be gorgeous? Yeah, that would be very, very nice. And then it's very there. Nice. It's there for... Yes. Ever. 
forever rather mm -hmm. than somebody getting them and, and making a mistake on washing them and then mm -hmm. poof. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason I haven't given much away. <laughs> <laughs> Because I don't, I don't want you. that to happen. And here's another cutout. Yeah, pretty. Yeah. My aunt Elma loved pastels. Loved bright colors. Yep. And you, as you'll see when we go through my stuff in a little bit. Look mm -hmm. at look at that. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Very look at that. delicate. Very oh. fine. I should yeah. just have all of this stuff framed. Is what I should do. Mm -hmm. Should cut it up. I hate to, but I hate to see it go someday mm -hmm. in, into goodwill too. I don't think that's gonna happen. I hope not. No, there's plenty of granddaughters yeah. to divide this out too. Okay, so. now we're gonna start in the tablecloth section. And we're gonna start with small ones. Either they used them for um, small tables um, or card tables or the middle of a large table. Well, card table was just a small table about this big that you sat four chairs, you played cards, because mm -hmm. people played cards. And if you, you played at a, re a regular table too, but if you wanted to have whist day nights, yeah. which my family did all the time. So if there was a card club, then people would bring over their card tables, set them all up, so it might be like five tables around the living room. Right, right, mm -hmm. yep. And then you'd like whoop and holler until two in the morning and your kids would be trying to get to sleep at night. Well, we'd whoop and holler till about 10.30. No, it was later than that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a card table right there. Yeah, that you and and also you could just put it on um, offside so the points were on the edges of the table. Isn't that cute? Very cute. But look at the zillions of little tiny French knots. I love it. Wow, I love it. So back in the day when there was no internet, no Google, how to do all this YouTube videos, how did they learn how to do it? From their moms or from books or friends? Well, I think, you know, like I said, Grandma went to needle, you know, she went to that school in Denmark that taught all the needleworks. And then there was books. Oh, that's true. Pamphlets, you know. My friend Marilyn down home and I decided at 14 and 15 we were gonna knit, so we went to, well, actually it was Luthels. Went downstairs oh, okay. is where they had material and stuff, and we got, a little pamphlet. <laughs> <laughs> how to do it. How to, how to knit. <laughs> and she became a fantastic knitter. Fabulous knitter. Yeah. And one time you knit me a really, really beautiful yeah. sweater too. I became a knitter. She came, became a fabulous knitter. Yeah, but your sweater that you did was yeah, very nice. It was nice. I'm trying to talk you into doing another one. I know you are. Now this is a little bit bigger. So I don't know why you're not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about that after a while. All right then. Oh. <laughs> Satin stitched, every one of these little tiny petals. Where yes. these are that lazy daisy stitch. Even the, oh, yeah, the leaves are. Oh yeah, there's a hole in, it, in the middle. Yeah, ah. but these are just all done with satin stitch. Ah, okay. You just, you you do it solid. Oh, okay. My goodness, a lot of my memories of her was just coming into a room there. She sat quietly, happily mm -hmm. embroidering mm -hmm. her beauties. This is bigger yet, and this, these edges didn't get done, see? This was a kit, and that's where you would be the line where you'd put lace or whatever mm -hmm. that you wanted to do. Well, this is definitely eye candy for people who enjoy this. It would be for me, Yeah. and I know there's a lot like me mm -hmm. that, that love to do it. There's a lot of work on that one, too. Yeah. Cross stitch, this is a beauty, because mm -hmm. there's tons of it. Look at all of that. There's just a ton of cross stitch on this thing. Just all over. Wow. Look at that. Isn't that Elma, Elma, I didn't appreciate you. <laughs> she taught me, but she also bought, took me to, there probably was a variety store, mm -hmm. and there was a kit with the Lord's Supper, and she bought me the needles and get, gave me little scissors and, and the thread to go with it. So it's impressive. Look at this. Yeah, and see that square goes down the middle. Ah, uh, okay. Of the table. Yep. I mean, there's, it's not as if there's just a little motif around the edge. There's a lot of work on that thing. A lot in the sides and then something going down the middle. And then her pizza Reese's dance. Uh -huh. If I said that right, because I love that blue. Oh, it's so pretty. Look at that. <laughs> it's just like a treasure. Mm -hmm. Look at that. It's amazing. Oh, I think it's just gorgeous. Well, obviously I do. It's kind of sad though that she spent all those hours on it and we can appreciate it by going, oh, isn't that beautiful? And then we just put them back. 
for many more years to come. I know. I've been doing a lot of thinking about that. Yeah. Should I give pleasure to others, even though I don't know how they'll treat them? Should I just trust that they'll love them as much as I do and be careful of them? I don't know what to do. I don't know either. They're this, they're this nice, and I have this amount because I haven't given them all up. I know. They're this nice they'd be long because, gone. Right. I don't know. Just hold on to it for now, and we'll have to think about yep. that. And here's another soft one. Um, all counted, no, all cross stitch. And with these, I'm pretty sure she would come up with her old, own color. Um, some kits, you know, they give you, along with the kit, in the package, um, thread. But some of these things, she just she came up with her own color combinations. Well, she must have got really good after a while. Knew how to do it all. You should Very see your creative. pile of blue and red ribbons. Oh, yeah. Do you have those still? I couldn't find them. Oh, yeah, shoot. But I know I have them. So, I'm a little prejudiced, possibly. But this w probably wouldn't go in the Smithsonian. But this should go maybe in some embroidery museum somewhere. Because you'll see there's so much work on the ends and on the sides. Look at this. It's down the center, and it's all cut work. Mm -hmm. Even these little tiny cherries or berries, this whatever. This is her masterpiece. Mm -hmm. This is definitely her masterpiece. Yeah, and then look at the sides here. Yeah, yep. And that's all little stitches. It's just magnificent. That's true. Yeah, that's fantastic. Good job. Thank you. I yeah. mean, that's many years of yeah. keeping these yeah, airtight and looking good. It is. But see, and, and my cousins, um, Nan does count across stitch and she crochets and she knits and Judy does the same and Pat does the same and I do the same and look at the generations and now some of the granddaughters are showing interest in it and that was from grandma who was an expert. She came over as an expert because she'd learned it all already and, and she was older. She was in her early 30s I think when she came over so she had she knew how to do all of this. She came over when she was 30. Early 30s, I think. And then she had six kids. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. I know. Mm -hmm.